Hey you guys, it's B Riley here this week, and what we're actually going to do is a quick fix video. This is an example today is going to be this Ibanez Tube Screamer. Uh, it's really similar to a lot of the stuff that I used to see when I was about 10 to 15. It seemed like everybody had a TS9 back then. Um, so this is great. This actually belongs to a good friend of mine uh, from a band up north of me. Um, and the problem that he was having was this, which is that the 9 volt connector which has the vinyl backing. This is like the super 70s style um, nine volt connector. Unfortunately, when you release them, you have a tendency of grabbing one half. And when you lift, uh, the flexibility is fine, but unfortunately the vinyl gives up and the backing lets out. And essentially what happens is, is this thing without warning will just rip out and then just dead your pedal. So now let's go over how to get that plastic piece in so that you're back on your way and you're not um, you know, spending more than the pedal's worth. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Go ahead and set up your workstation. You're going to need rosin core solder. going to need a couple different screwdrivers. You always want to have a couple different screwdrivers uh, for the broadness of the bits, so this way you don't strip something out. And uh, locate the screws holding on the back panel. Now, if you're working on another guitar pedal, it'll actually work just the same. Uh, the screw locations might be different, but essentially you're going to be looking at the same thing, just tracing back those leads. Uh, do be aware, on the TS9, there is one single screw on the inside of the circuit board, so don't pull on that thing until you get it out of there. Okay, so here we are dropping the ground off of the jack. That's where it hardwires in. So we got everything apart. Uh, go ahead and prep your new plug by uh, twisting down the lead. This is going to strengthen the lead so that you don't have uh, strands that break off. And basically, once you get the other lead out by just applying a bit of heat with the soldering iron, you can pull with the wire very lightly and it'll pop right out. Just do the same thing in reverse. Put the wire in through the back of the hole where it went before, heat up the solder, the wire will pop through. And then you can just add a bit of solder on top. This is kind of like putting the, you know, the bottle cap on. This will keep it from uh, pulling aside. Not too much, so you remember if you have a ton of solder sitting around, it's just going to be a mess and it's going to look pretty choppy. Okay, so you've got the ground wired in. Now you're gonna go ahead and locate where the lead is going into the circuit board. Uh, so get the ground wire out of the way. You know, uh, Try to keep your area clear, and if you have things that are no longer integral, then don't worry about it. So we've located the point on the circuit board. It's one of the uh, top pins, and it's going in from the rear. So what we're doing is I'm just putting my thumb and my forefinger on the wire and just pulling gently while I heat up the solder on the top and it pops right out. Once you twist up the red line, put it into the back, let it rest against the soldering point, put the soldering iron on it, and you'll feel the board kind of slide towards your fingers. That means that the wire and the lead has gone through. It might not be very protrusive, but it's there. And then you can kind of just tidy it up a little bit, maybe like put a, just a dab of solder on there. You don't want a lot, and you especially don't want a lot on the circuit board because A, it's messy, and B, you can wind up shorting things out. I always do this thing where I give it a little pull, nothing heavy, just enough to make sure it's there. And uh, once you've got that, then you're good to go. Uh, in this case, I just felt it necessary to put just a little bit more up on top there. Those solders are pretty, pretty dry, and there wasn't a lot of material holding it together. So here we go, checking it again. Okay, so you've got your old plug out, which is literally falling apart more and more as I'm handling it. Uh, and you've got your new plug in. So all we need to do now is route things the way that they were before and make sure that when it does go all back together that A, we test it, and B, that we're not getting to a situation where it could break. Don't forget to unplug your soldering iron because fire is bad. Go ahead and wind the jack down and into the casing. Get your tin with all your bits. Wash it first, not second. Go ahead and grab some pliers and torque it down. Try not to finger tighten these. Um, it's not like a car. It doesn't have a recommended torque setting, but you do want to make sure it's pretty damn snug because if it's not and it starts to come loose, it doesn't need to totally let go in order to start making interruptions in the signal um, or just making a lot of noise. So tack it down. Make sure it doesn't get stripped or anything like that. Be light about it. Be gentle. Uh, the nut that goes on that jack isn't great quality. You can kind of feel it's not SAE level stuff. Okay, so route your wires underneath the board. Go ahead and tuck the board back down. Uh, remember, you're going to need that one screw. There you go. That's the guy. Okay. Go ahead and pop that back in to retain the board so that you don't have any uh, pulling or, or excessive stress on the wires. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing um, on the TS9 is that they don't have a grommet for this. Instead, you tie it into a loop, 
and you pull the loop backward. This will give you your slack for the battery. And then you slot that wire through there with the knot behind it. And what this means is, is that if you should absentmindedly grab the battery to go change it in the future, that you won't accidentally be putting all of that pressure on the soldering points of the board or the soldering points of the jack. Go ahead and snap the back piece into the uh, place. There's a little plastic shield too you have to put there. This is to prevent, uh, you know, noise and all that sort of stuff. That's basically like, a, it's kind of like a intercavity iso, uh, iso mat or a, a shield, like shielding. Okay, go ahead and tack it all back down. Once again, use a screwdriver that fits the screw like it was made for it because the screw quality on these and the casing is it's basically pig iron. It's really soft and it's very easy to strip these out. There you go. Nearly there. Okay, let's go ahead and test it. First thing we're going to do is yank the actual terminal out of the battery now that the old one is gone. So we got that guy out of there. Pop him back in. Okay, so once the battery is plugged back in, uh, go ahead and button it up, chuck the cover on the back, get it all snapped together. It's looking a lot better now. Uh, don't forget, pedals don't power up if they don't have cables in them. So get yourself a spare cable, plug it into the side, and stop it. The light's up, you're good to go. Yank the cable back out, reinstall on your board, and go play as loud as humanly possible. Uh, but this thing is good to go and tested and checked. Everything's working right. Um, so go ahead and button it up, put it back on your board, do what you got to do. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, can get something out of this. Remember that this is applicable to any 9 volt supply issue. It's just a matter of taking the screwdriver, taking it all apart, hunting down those leads, uh, and then replacing. It's literally a two-step process once everything is exposed. So don't worry about it. Have faith in yourself. You can fix this stuff. If anybody else could do it, you could do it. Uh, if I could do it, you could definitely do it. And uh, this has been B. Riley. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we've got, uh, as was previously mentioned, we're going to be doing a project a bit this week. I've got some time off this week and I, I need something to do. So we're going to be doing a uh, nitro refinish on um, this uh, 68 Repro Strat that I've got, which was put together by a friend of mine really, really well. And uh, we will get to that. So stay tuned. Subscribe, please. Make sure you comment underneath. Uh, fill me in on what you guys are looking for. And uh, we'll see you as the next video rolls out. Cool. Later, dudes.